This is the image we're going to be using. I'm starting with the kind of color study I did. I did a number of color studies trying to figure out what color scheme I want to use for this painting. And this is, this is 5 by 5 inches. I spend about 20 minutes on them. Get a different set of colors for each one and decide which one works best. And this does a number of things. Each time I use a different set of colors, I get a little better idea of what I could mix with the colors on my palette, as opposed to just copying the uh, photograph. It gets me out of my comfort zone. Skies aren't always blue. Grass isn't always just green. You get a lot of variety, a chances to mix a lot of different colors. Now this is the photograph I used. It's a photograph in the Tetons. And the color is very bland. It's green and gray for the background, gray in the sky. So I want to use colors that are going to give me the effect of light I want or a mood that I want. And I really can't go wrong on the color. What I can go wrong on is the values. So I do a value sketch first. Here's the value sketch. And this is also a 5x5. Five five. The photograph did not work very well vertically. It wasn't a tall composition because the mountains just aren't mountains and, and hills and trees just aren't real tall. Now you can say the mountains are tall, but they're not tall enough that they take up the whole image. Now I could crop it right in here and make it a vertical, but it just doesn't work as well. And it's not a horizontal because it doesn't work stretched out real long because then I would lose the top of the mountains and I'd lose the sky. So generally, if it doesn't work vertically and doesn't work horizontally, then it's going to work in a square. So this is a 5x5 five five also. And I spent about 4 or 5 minutes on these and I did several that were more of a rectangle and they just didn't work as well as the square. So, And in this I try to overlap quite a bit. The mountains here overlap these clouds. These clouds overlap those clouds. This mountain overlaps that mountain. Trees overlap the mountains and so on. Everything overlaps. Even some trees down here overlap the background hills. So as much as I can, I want to create more depth and space by overlapping. Sounds like it's a simple thing you would think of, but if we just copy the photograph, we'll have a lot of tangents where things don't overlap, and they look side by side instead of one object behind the other. And I want to keep the values real simple. Two darks for the hills and the mountains, a dark for the trees in the foreground, and then a simple just white of the paper for all the lights. So I'm looking for that simple pattern of dark and light, I'm not looking for a complete value range in these drawings. Just simple dark, simple light, where I can set up the shapes, see how they're going to work compositionally. And this is what I'll use to draw from, because this is where I've made the changes. When we go back to the photograph, here's the photograph. You can see I've zoomed in, cropped off, and made a better square composition. I also added the river to pull the eye to the left and then back to the right to this tree. This tree is important because it balances off the composition. It's very heavy on the left side. The mountains, the hills, the smaller trees are all on the left side. That's where all the weight is, all the, sh the bigger shapes are. So this smaller shape balances it out, plus the river points to that smaller shape. And that gives a nice balance. It's not symmetrical. You know, I don't have even weight on both sides. That would be boring. So a good example of that, I have here some paintings that we're going to talk about. This is one here, and it's called a steel yard balancing composition. I have no idea why it's called steel yard, but real heavy on one side, and then balancing off with some smaller shapes or one shape on the other side. So if I were to take this out or this out, it would be way too heavy, but just a little bit on the other side makes a balance. Plus, he's got a red here that balances off all the green. So he's using color also. This is an artist, uh, Chauncey Ryder, early 20th century landscape painter. A couple of more of these. This is another one where heavy weight on the left side and it's balanced off by a little weight on the other side. And maybe a, um, some contrasting color or contrasting value. But he doesn't want this shape the same size on both sides. It again becomes symmetrical. And these are either outside or inside color sketches. He's working out his colors that he wants to do for a larger painting. You can see the focus is not on the drawing. And this shows you how unnecessary tight drawing is because it still has a beautiful feel of depth 
colors harmonize, nice values, and it's all without much drawing. Same thing here, really working the colors that he wants in the foreground. Cooler, grayer colors in the background, a lot of stronger colors in the foreground. Most of the detail, most of the value contrast is in the foreground, keeps the background simple. But he's working out ideas for colors. This is real nice color changes in here. The grayish violets, the blues, the yellow greens, the grays over in here. Real nice color harmony in there. Contrasted with the more muted, less colorful background. You know, the sky isn't blue. It goes from yellow to kind of a, a um, bluish green. Real light. Clouds are red and violet instead of, you know, white. So a lot of color variation. They're not safe colors. And you really learn a lot about what your colors can do when you see things this way. Here the colors are a bit more safe, but there's still a lot of variation. They're kind of an olive green, yellow, orange green in the trees, almost a bluish green in the grass, real bluish color in the background. So this is more of a very harmonious, analogous color of you know, yellow green, blue green, blue, and it uses, you can see the red in here and in the path, a little bit of red in the sky and in the shrubbery down there. He uses that to contrast uh, all the greens. So going back to my painting here, I set up a color scheme that I want to use to see what colors I want. This is a, an analogous color scheme. All the colors are on the same side of the color wheel. And the, the, what they have in common is yellow. Okay, yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. And the complement to that, somewhere in the middle, is violet. And this is how I mix it up, darker to lighter. I mix up the yellow green without any white, and I add a little bit lighter, a little bit more white to it, and kind of blend them so that I have three or four values going from, you know, darker without any white to lighter. I don't have many darks with this color scheme. The violet's my dark, so I'll use that more for my dark with maybe a bit of orange in it or a bit of green to mute it some. But these colors will harmonize. And what it is, is a, an analogous color scheme. If I go to the color wheel, these all have yellow in them. The orange, yellow, orange, yellow, and yellow, green. And about in the middle is violet on the other side. Violet or blue violet. And that's what I use to gray these colors, to have a little bit of cool color, something to contrast all the orange. Another analogous would be with blue. So I could have blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and violet. Then my complement would be orange or yellow, orange or all red, orange, red, orange, red, red, violet, and blue, green, or green would be my complement. So that's an analogous color scheme. It's a little more peaceful because everything has some of those same colors in it. The other one would be a split complementary color scheme. And that's this color scheme here I used. And it's, again, this is about a five by five. I spent about 20 minutes on it. It is a blue, violet, red, violet, and yellow, and uh, also very harmonious because I'm just using those colors plus white. And when we go to the color wheel again, it's a split complementary. So what I do is I find a complement, and my complement here is yellow and violet. I know I want yellow in the painting, so instead of violet, though, I'm going to split this complement and make it blue, uh, blue, violet, and violet. So it's a split complement. So yellow, blue, violet, and violet, plus white. I'll have a wide range of, of values here. Another split, of course, I could have reversed it. I could have had a violet and yellow and then split the yellow to yellow orange and yellow green. And that would have worked pretty well too. But anything, red, violet, and yellow, green, could use the red, violet, and yellow and green. So split complements are good also. And again, you have a wide range of values once you start adding white. And each time I change a color, by adding white to it, it really makes it a different looking color. So you end up with a ton of color and you also end up learning what you can do with certain colors on your palette. You learn your color, or your, your palette better and it gets you out of your comfort zone of just matching the photograph. And this is a poor photograph anyway, so we want to get away from it. But this is what I would do. This is the analogous, the yellow analogous color scheme. Yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, and orange with the violet as the complement. And I mix them up and add white to them. And uh, this is what I use to paint. Usually mix up quite a bit more. These paintings were five by five inch, so I didn't need to mix up a lot. But everything's already pre-mixed. I just have to pick the right values 
and then blend whatever I want to blend. I could mix the orange with a little bit of yellow and put it in the green and add a touch of violet. You know, really mix up these colors. I usually have one predominating though and add one or two of the others to get some variation. But that's what he's done here. Used a color scheme and stuck with those colors, blended them together, and you got a lot of nice, different, harmonious colors. If I have too much of, too many colors going different directions, none of them harmonize. And I usually don't end up with these subtle colors, all these nice gray, subtle colors that make the stronger colors really jump out, really help the composition.